How's it going today everybody and welcome back to my channel, Shaner's Mechanic Life. Today I'm going to show you that depending on what the problem is of uh, your starter, that you may not necessarily need to purchase a whole starter and pay, you know, two, three hundred bucks depending on make and model. Now if you have a problem where you turn your key and you just hear a clicking noise, the problem may not be the motor itself, it could be inside the contacts for the solenoid. Now how pretty much every starter works is you have a couple terminals. You have a small wire and a large wire. The large wire goes usually directly to your battery and the small wire goes to your ignition switch. Now when you turn your key, power goes to the small terminal which through magnetism closes contacts inside and the power goes from this terminal through the contacts to this terminal and down into the motor and then the motor turns. Now if you hear just a click like I was saying earlier well you're first you need to check that you have battery voltage here and when you turn your key that you get battery voltage to here and when you hear a click, if you keep get someone to hold the key on, check this terminal. If you have battery voltage here, then chances are there are problems in the motor. But if it clicks and you don't have battery voltage here, problems inside the solenoid with the contacts. So I'm going to open this up, show you guys what's inside and how it works. So first off, what you want to do is pull these three screws out. Now every starter is different. Uh, some may be a lot easier which this is an easy one and uh, some of them you may not be able to get at too easily. So what you want to do is pull these screws out. As you're taking stuff like this apart you want to make sure you lay this parts out in the order you took them out or took them out of uh, that way when you go to put it back together everything's more organized and easier to keep track of so like I was saying this is the inside here's a solenoid plunger now it's kind of hard to see because it's inside a, inside a hole there So you always have your battery voltage here and when you turn your key power goes through here and creates a magnetic field in the windings which pulls this in. So here's your contacts here and there and when this is drawn in by magnetism this copper ring here that will bridge the two contacts letting power go through to the this terminal. So usually what happens as they wear, you can see how grooved out this is. Once they get it apart you'll see how, how paper thin it is. And once that wears out, one side more the other or it gets all pitted, you won't have uh, continuity so it won't, it won't allow the power to go across because it just won't make contact between the two because they're worn out. So I'll show you how to take these out you can order a parts kit for most of your common starters if, uh, if your parts store doesn't have them look on the internet there's usually uh, places that rebuild these so they, they should have the parts in stock for these more common ones so here's a new kit comes with your contacts and a new plunger. So taking these apart is pretty straightforward. Take the nut off use plastic insulator and an o-ring that keeps all the water out 
then this will come straight out. Now you want to keep track of what order all these parts go together on. Because you've got this insulator here which insulates it from shorting out against the housing. So you can see how wore this is. That groove's not supposed to be there, it should be flat. Like this new one. Keep that to the side. You open up the other side, same as you did the first side. So once you get it all apart, you just want to compare your new parts and your old. Make sure everything's right. Which these are. Now you want to make sure there's a return spring here. You don't want to lose that or you're going to have some problems. So get all your new parts ready. I always put the old ones out of reach just so you don't accidentally screw up and put the old parts back in. So I've pretty much got this side back together. Now as you put it back together you want to leave these nuts a little bit loose. I'll show you why in a minute here. So the ones you get Get everything back together the way it came apart. The o ring on. You know, same as disassembly, only in reverse. You keep your parts laid out nicely. You won't have a problem remembering how it came came apart. Like I said, just do them up finger tight. Put your spring on your new plunger. Now, before you tighten them, what I always do is push that plunger in. And what that does, that squares up all your contacts. So you get good contact all the way around and your new contacts will last quite a while. Got that side, snug it down. This side, snug her down. Make sure nothing binds. And you can throw your cover back on. Now when I'm putting these covers and starting these little screws I always, always start them by hand and I'll run them in with a, just a regular screwdriver. A lot of these housings, it's just made a cast. And the threads are so small, it's very easy to cross thread them and, and you're kind of defeating the purpose of replacing these contacts. When you're dealing with these little screws too, is uh, you want to make sure you lay off the coffee. Kind of gives you the shakes. And when you're trying to line up these little parts, it uh, doesn't exactly make things easy. So we'll run these in. They don't have to be super tight either. They got lock washers on them. Put the wire back on this side. Snug it down. Put the cover on there. And there you go. Instead of buying the starter for two, three hundred bucks, because it was only the contacts that were the problem, I just replaced the contacts and plunger, which only cost me uh, between ten and fifteen bucks.
and let me know what you think in the comments section. Hit that like button and subscribe. I got more videos on the way. Well, that's it for tonight, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks for watching.